Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a two-way path. Now, a two-way path is a type of behavior that allows you to move components along a path in either a forward or backward direction. For example, in the 3D world, I've modeled these orange blocks as two-way conveyors. So I have this conveyor here selected, and notice when the robot picks a part, it will place it on the conveyor, and the part moves in a forward direction along the path. In this case, the path is defined at this start point here, and it ends here. Now after a process finishes in the conveyor, notice that the part is now moving backward along that same path from the end to the start. So its direction is being changed. And if you want to see this in action, we can go to the Component Properties panel. Notice there's a tab called Two-Way Path for the Behavior, and here's its direction property. So notice the part is now moving in a forward direction, and I'm actually using a Python script to control the logic of the path. So now the direction has been changed to backward, and the part moves backward. And after the robot picks the part, the directions then change to forward, so the next part can be received and moved to this process here. All right, now if you're interested in learning more about PASS, please stay tuned for this video, and if you need links to the files, just check the video description down below. Are you ready? All right, let's get started. The first step is to create a new component for the two-way path. Now if you want, you can go to the eCatalog panel, expand models by type, and then click conveyors. And you can use any of these items as a template for modeling a new two-way path or you can use the geometry import command here and you can import your own CAD file and model your own component to have a two-way path. However, in this case, I'm just going to create a brand new component from scratch. So I'll click the modeling tab, go to the component group, and then click new to create a new component in the 3D world. I'll now rename the component. So in the component properties panel, I'll set name to two-way conveyor. And now we have a new component. The next step is to add geometry to the component. So go to the geometry group, click the features arrow, and then click box to add a block feature to the component. Let's now edit the dimensions of the block, so I'll go to the feature properties panel, set length to be 1000, width to be 400, and height to be 700. So let's get a better look, and there's the block. The next step is to add frame features to the component that can be points of reference for the path in the 3D world. In this case, I want the path to move components along the top face of the block. So I'll add a frame feature here at this edge midpoint, and a frame feature here at this end point. So this will be the start of the path, and this will be the end of the path. So I'll go to the geometry group, click the features arrow, and then click frame to add the frame feature. Now if you can't see the label of the frame feature in the 3D world, go to the 3D world toolbar, click the frame types arrow, and then select this checkbox here called frames. Yep, and there's the label. I'll now use the move tool to relocate this frame, so I'll just drag it to that midpoint there. And I want the orientation of the frame to be so that the x-axis is basically facing or pointing in this direction. So its orientation, you can see here in the Feature Properties panel, is rx is 0, ry is 0, and rz is 0. And this orientation is also helpful if we're going to set up an interface to plug a component into the two-way path. So when the component plugs into the two-way path, you know, the part will be facing in this direction. Let's rename this frame. So I'll set the name to be in frame A. And I'll now create the other frame feature. So I'll go to the geometry group, click the features arrow, click frame, use the move tool and just drag that frame to the other midpoint there. Make sure its orientation is good. Yes, our X, our Y, and our Z are zero. Let's now rename it to be out frame A. The next step is to add a two-way path behavior. So I'll go to the behavior group, click the behavior zero, and then under Material Flow, I'll click Two-Way Path to add that behavior. I now need to reference these frame features in the path, so I'll go to the Properties panel, click the Path Expand button, followed by the Add button, and I'll now add the frame features in order, so in frame A, out frame A, just like so. Let's close this out, and go on to the next step. The next step is to figure out how you want to transfer parts to the two-way path. So if I go to the Component Graph panel, expand the two-way path behavior. Notice it has two ports. So there's an input port and an output port. And these ports are doing exactly what they mean. So the output port is transferring out components from the end of the two-way path, and the input port is transferring parts into the start of the two-way path. Now notice here I have the input port selected, and if I go to the properties panel, you have these two choices for input and output. So when the input box is selected, that means it's transferring parts into the start of the two-way path. Now what I could do is I could select this output checkbox, and what that will mean is I can now transfer parts out from the start of the two-way path. 
I'll do the same for the output port, so I'll select it here in the component graph panel. And now I can select the input checkbox to transfer parts into the back or the end of the two-way path. Now since the two-way path has a direction, you can transfer parts either in a forward direction or a backward direction. So if a part's received from the start of the path here, you can transfer it forward. Otherwise, if a part's received from the end of the two-way path, you can transfer it backwards. All right, and we'll see how this works in a minute. So what I can do now is set up the interfaces for plugging in components to the two-way path. So go to the behavior group, click the behavior zero, and then click one-to-one -to, -one to add a one-to-one -one interface. So I'm going to create a plug for plugging in a component to the two-way path. So in the properties panel, I'll click add new section to create a plug. And we're going to transfer parts into the two-way path at the start. So I'll set the section frame to be in frame A. I'll create a flow field because we're transferring components from one container to another. In this case, the container is the two-way path. And for its port, we're going to set it to be input at the moment. So now let's go and test that input connection we created at the start of the path here. So I'll click the Home tab, and under Models by Type in the eCatalog panel, I'll click Feeders, and then I'll drag this item into the 3D world, this basic feeder. So there it is. And now if I try to plug it in, yep, there's the green arrow, so it moves closer, and they connect to one another. So now if I run the simulation, the part's transferred into the two-way path, and it moves in a forward direction from the start of the path to the end of the path. Now if I select the two-way conveyor I'm setting up here, I can go to the component properties panel, click the two-way path tab, and notice I have this direction property for controlling the direction parts move along the path. So right now it's moving from the start of the path to the end of the path, but if I just wait for a part to get towards the middle, I'll now change the direction to be backward, and now the part's moving from the end of the path back to the start. Now you can write your own logic using a Python script, some sensors and signals to control the direction of the two-way path, but we won't cover that in this video. So let's go and reset, and let's actually unplug the feeder from the two-way conveyor. So let me select it here. Now let's say we want to connect the feeder from the end of the two-way path so parts move backward automatically. Well, let's, we need to set up the interface for that as well. And notice that if I try to connect it here, nothing happens. And I also want the orientation of the feeder to be facing this way so parts flow in this backward direction. And you can see here, if I set up an interface at the out frame A, those x-axis of those two frames don't match up. So I need to add a new frame to the end of the path that has the right orientation. So you might be confused right now, but it'll make sense in a minute. So I'll select my two-way conveyor here, click the modeling tab, and we need to add a new frame feature. So in the features drop down menu there, I'll click frame. Here's the frame, and now I'm going to drag it not to the start of the path, but the end of the path here by out frame A and I need to change its orientation, so we need to rotate it around the z-axis. So in the Feature Properties panel, I'll set RZ to be 180, and it looks like it did it, so let me just check by clicking the Object Coordinate System, and yep, now that x-axis is flowing in that direction. Let's now set up a plug or section here for the input. So I'll go back to the Komodo Graph panel, select my one-to-one -one interface, and I need to add a new section or plug, I'm going to set the section frame to be that frame I just created. Create the flow field. The container is still the same on the two-way path. And now, instead of using the input port, I'm going to use the output port. So notice here, I have two plugs for transferring components into the two-way path. So one for the input at the start of the two-way path, and one for transferring it at the end of the, of the two-way path. And notice in the previous step, what I did is I've set the input port and the output port of the two-way path to both transfer in and transfer out parts. So let's now test this. So sometimes this can be a bit tricky with the connection. So if I select the basic feeder, yep, we can see that the arrow, so it is recognizing a compatible interface. And now if I move it closer, they snap together. And if I select my two-way conveyor, notice in the component properties panels right now it's set to backward. But what if I actually change this to forward auto? Let's see what happens. Yep, there it goes. So now the part is automatically moving in the right direction based on where it was transferred into the two-way path. So whether you set direction to be backward auto or forward auto, it's going to automatically recognize where the part is coming from and where it is in the path, and then it will automatically move in that right direction. So the part's coming from the end of the path, so it changes to backward auto. All right, let's go and reset. And let's actually unplug the feeder. And let's say you want to have a connection for uh, transferring out components, so you want to plug another conveyor into this two-way path. Well, it's the same step I just showed you. 
So we need to create a frame over here to support an outflow from this direction. And we can just use that out frame A here to transfer out a component in that direction. So I'll select a two-way conveyor, go to the modeling tab, and we need to set up another interface. So in the behavior group, we'll click to behavior zero, click one-to-one -to, -one to add a new interface. Let's now add a new plug. We want to transfer components out from the end of the two-way path. So we're going to use out frame A, create that flow field. We're transferring from the two-way path container and we're transferring from the end of the two-way path. So I set the port name to be output. Let's now create a new frame and plug for transferring components out from the start of the two-way path here. So I need to change the orientation. So I'll create a new frame and I'll drag frame one up to where in frame A is. Notice it's X direction is facing that way. So we need to kind of rotate it again around the Z axis. So in the feature properties panel, I'll set our Z to be 180. Looks good so far. Let's go back to that out interface two for transferring out components. Need to add a new section, put it at frame one, make the flow field, the container still a two-way path, and now we're transferring components out from the start of the two-way path, so we're gonna set the port to be input. So we have a section for transferring components from the end of the two-way path, and a section for transferring components out from the start of the two-way path. So let's see how this works. I'll go ahead and go back to the home tab, and in my e-catalog panel, I'll expand conveyors under models by type, click visual components, because we're the best, <laughs> all right? I'll then drag the conveyor into the 3D world, and I should now be able to plug and play the conveyor to the end of a two-way, of my two-way path conveyor, and yep, there's the green arrow. Move it closer, it plugs in, and notice the direction of the green arrow, that's important, so it's flowing out that way. Let's not forget about our feeder, so let's plug him into this. Yep, and now it has the right orientation. Select my two-way conveyor. It's set to backward auto now, but that should change based on where the part enters the two-way path. Yep, and now the part is moving forward. And will it exit? Yep, there it goes. All right, let's reset this. And you can see here you have the arrows pointing for where the parts can be transferred out of the two-way path. So this arrow is pointing into the two-way path. This arrow is pointing out from the two-way path. This one's pointing in from the end of the two-way path into it and here's one pointing out from the start of the two-way path. So let's test those two. So I'll select my feeder, unplug you, get our conveyor. Now what happens sometimes is that your components, based on their orientation, they might accidentally connect this way. So now the output port is connected kind of in a funny way. So actually let me get that conveyor back. And now the conveyor has the right orientation, so when I move it closer, yep, it now plugs to the right orientation. Let's do the same for the feeder. So actually we'll just rotate this a bit in place, plug it into that plug I set up at the end of the two-way path for transferring components in. Select my two-way conveyor. It's set to forward auto now, but it should change to backward automatically based on where the part comes from, and yep, now the part's flowing backward. And come on, baby, flow onto that conveyor. Yeah! All right, let's reset that. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to go to our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and I hope you have a wonderful day.